So basically, in this previous, in this other timeline, he's trying to find the Justice League, but they're not there. No Wonder Woman, Cyborg, no Superman. Um, but that's why they think Superman was contained in Russia. But they go and it's super girly. You know, I'm really just giving a whole synopsis of this film. But... Yes. Uh, so... Michael Keaton was great in this film, I felt. I think he was the best thing in the film. Well, actually, no, the best thing was the very last scene of the film, I, I think. But, but, you know, there were cameos. But like I said, with Supergirl, I did not mind her. But I felt like it, she was a bit underwhelming to be in this film. I thought the multiverse aspect could have been done a lot with a greater vision. You know, I think instead of it being Supergirl who they discover, I think it should have been someone like one of the previous Superman actors. It should have been someone like um, from Smallville. Or it should have been the actor from Superman Returns. I actually preferred the Superman Returns actor to Henry Cavill. In my opinion, I was never a great fan of Henry Cavill, I think. It's especially past the first uh, movie, Man of Steel. I don't know why people love him as Superman. I think they just haven't had much diversity of Superman, to be honest. He's been Superman for a long time, since Man of Steel is quite an old film at this point. They just never made a second one. They got diverted by Batman and Superman and Justice League. You know, I think it would have even been cool if they had Christopher Reeves, Superman. They did bring him back as a cameo, but he didn't really do anything. He was just sort of floating or stood there as all of these universes were colliding. The Flash was watching all of these planets crash into one another. And we saw some cameos. But I, again, I don't think it went far enough. We saw uh, an interesting Easter egg scene with Nicolas Cage as Superman fighting a giant spider, a robotic spider. And for those who do not know, Tim Burton was going to film, direct a Superman film at the end of the 90s with Nicolas Cage as Superman. And the, the script had him fighting a giant spider. Um, and of course that never happened. But that's been something that people have been wondering about for a long time online. That got, you can even see online, I saw it uh, the other day, Nicolas Cage trying on the Superman costume from 1997. But that whole thing got cancelled for some reason that I don't remember, to be honest. So, that was basically showing us another timeline where that happened. And if anyone did not know about this story, then they would probably have been very confused wh about why Nicolas Cage is su Superman. But, I mean, it still kind of works since it's supposed to be different timelines. But yes, it was only a very brief scene. We see him fighting this metal giant spider. And we see Christopher Reeves, uh, Superman. And I think we very, very briefly hear or see, um, oh, what's his name, the 1960s Batman say something and we hear the Joker laugh from the 1960s. But weirdly and disappointingly, there was no reference that I saw or remember to the Nolan trilogy, so I'm very confused why. There was no reference at all. So it felt smaller than it should have felt, to be honest. This is the kind of movie where you should throw everything in that you, you know, can, really. 
you should go far with this concept. And, you know, we didn't. We did not. Where was... It would have been nice to see Heath Ledger's Joker brought back. Why not? Even if it's just the same manner as Christopher Reeve was brought back. But there's so many actors that you could have used. The villain in this film was General Zod again. And that whole timeline, that whole story gets kind of forgotten. It, it doesn't really have a solution. Which I know was the whole point of the film. Because Ezra's mother said some problems don't have a solution. But at the same time it's underwhelming when you have a villain. Who's just sort of there and is not defeated. They could have brought back any, any actor. I think every single Batman actor, villain, at least from Tim Burton to now, is still alive. They could have brought back um, Jack Nicholson Joker. They could have brought back Danny DeVito Penguin, Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, uh, Tommy Lee Jones Two-Face, uh, Jim Curry um, Riddler. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze, you know, um, Poison Ivy, whatever her name was, I forgot, the one who plays Kill Bill. You know, they could have brought back Bane from The Dark Knight Rises or Ra's al Ghul from uh, The Dark Knight, um, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises. So, literally every villain they could have you know, you have a whole selection of people to choose from, and all they do was General Zod. <laughs> it's General Zod is kind of stale, to be honest. And I was not a fan of that whole final battle. The whole final battle took place on some barren wasteland, and it, it's just disappointing. You know, these movies have been criticised. I've seen the criticism online for final battles being in some barren wasteland. Batman vs Superman had that criticism. Wonder Woman got that criticism. You know, it's not interesting. And this is even less interesting than those two movies. It doesn't look real. It doesn't feel real. It looks like a video game, you know, like a generic, um, you know, when you look down in a video game, if you're flying or something, and it's just like a plain colour. It kind of reminds me of the Phantom Menace Star Wars film, where they're on uh, Naboo, and on this really high building, and you see the ships flying around, and you look down at the terrain and it looks so like it just looks like a block of color it's so plain and nothing interesting to look at so the final battle was the worst thing about this film the final battle was just a barren wasteland i i was confused why they were even here i thought zod was attacking the city he doesn't attack the city like he does in man of steel and it's been a long time since I have seen Man of Steel, so I didn't remember, I don't remember that scene where they attack all of the soldiers and stuff in that barren wasteland. So I don't, it's possible that was in the film originally, but I don't remember that. And I don't know why he doesn't go to the city like he does in the film, where he fights Superman. So, the, it, it looked bad, it, Ah, I did not like that final battle, J just for the location indeed, and for the dumb Batman flying into something, I don't even know what he flew into, he just decided he's going down because his Batwing was damaged, and then he decides, well, I'm not going down alone, and then he just flies into something and dies. And it was so anticlimactic. It just, I don't even know what he flew into. <laughs> yeah. 
and it didn't really disrupt anything so what was the point of that and then it turns out that they just reverse time and he's alive again and then he dies again but to be fair the second death was a lot better than the first death at least he gets it's a bit more emotional at, at least but still it's 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 just bizarre and then the two Ezra's have a fight over whether they should go back in time and do it over and over and over again. Oh, by the way, the Supergirl dies twice as well. So, they keep going back in time. But I would have liked to have seen more of the different timelines going back in time. You know, we only see them die twice. I want to see them die... And... Oh, wait, 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 wait. They, they did show it, but they showed it in that weird bubble pocket of, you know, whatever that is, where that they use. It's like a purgatory. It's some space without the time, I guess. Um, but this is when it's revealed... Oh, yeah, they, they do show, like, people... A supergirl being stabbed again by Zod in this weird, like, sphere that they're in. And this is when that mysterious figure from earlier shows up. And it's revealed that figure is Ezra. And he's gone all crusty and... I don't remember what he looked like, to be honest, but he had some kind of weird... creme over his body. He had to break off something off his face to show who it was underneath it was all crusty and it's revealed to be Ezra because he keeps going back in time over and over and over again to try and change time to try and I think to try and save Batman and Supergirl but every time they're being killed and but he's still there he's still stuck there and I forgot how long he's been there but it's been a long time um and then he tries to kill the normal Ezra for some reason. Oh yes, I think it's because the normal Ezra wanted all of this to stop. And he wanted to undo everything. But if he undoes everything, then his mother is going to die. Like she did originally. And the other Ezra doesn't want that. He wants that to be stopped. He thinks that he's just giving up too easily. He He's just allowing the mother to die too easily. So that's why he, he wants to go back in time over and over and over again. And that's why there's now this old Ezra in this bubble who is just stuck there because he's never giving up. And then he tries to kill the normal Ezra, but the younger Ezra gets in between and he ends up dead. And I don't remember what happens. I think killing the younger Ezra killed the old Ezra. From what I recall. But I don't actually remember him dying. So it can't have been that <laughs> interesting. So I, I just presume he died when he killed the younger one. And then... And then I don't even remember what happened. Then it does get undone. And then Ezra goes back to his normal time. But when he does that, there is a cameo at the end. And I don't want to ruin it. But I will. Because I told you there would be spoilers. But when I saw this, I thought that... Because Bruce Wayne was there. He was just talking to Bruce Wayne on the phone. And he said he's going to be there. And then the car parks up and all these reporters are rushing to the car. And I'm thinking, well, it's just going to be the normal Bruce Wayne, of course, because he was just on the phone with him. And if there was anything unusual about his voice, then it would have, he would have noticed, of course. Uh, but then it becomes clear that there's going to be a twist because it doesn't show his face. Even as he's walking through these reporters, it doesn't show his face. And we see this grey or white hair. And I thought it was going to be... Ah, it's the Bruce Wayne that he just met. It's the Bruce Wayne. It's Michael Keaton. But it wasn't Michael Keaton. 
it was George Clooney. <laughs> and I, I really enjoyed that twist because George Clooney is underrated, I feel. And George Clooney was in one Batman movie, Batman and Robin, which is usually voted the worst Batman film of all eternity. But I happen to really enjoy that film. I don't consider it the worst of all eternity. But, you know, I don't think it's campier than Batman Forever. I don't think it's even campier than Tim Burton's films. They are darker, literally, yes, literally they are darker. But they have, you know, they have a guy brought up by penguins who has a mind control device making the penguins, you know, suicide terrorists. You have a woman pushed out of a window, brought back to life by a cat, and then has nine lives, supposedly, even though she was electrocuted, I think. You have Jack Nicholson with some ring. I think it was a ring. He shakes someone's hand and they turn into a black skeleton in seconds. You know, you have Jack Nicholson going through the monitors of the, of the TV screens, which should have been impossible to do. There's all of these monitors in the film uh, next to one another. And Jack Nicholson's face in the broadcast because he hijacked every TV in Gotham. And his face is going in between the, the, the monitors. That's impossible. Why don't people complain about that? There's lots of goofy, crazy things in Tim Burton's films. So I don't think they're more realistic than the, the brighter, colourful uh, Schollmacher films. But they get a bad rap. But then, nonetheless, George Clooney, I was glad to see him. Um... It was actually ruined for me that he was in the film because, you know, sadly I saw it online in a Wikipedia about the movie Batman and Robin that George Clooney appeared as a cameo in The Flash. So I was annoyed, but I actually completely forgot about that by the time of the when he actually appeared. So I'm grateful that I forgot. I did remember in the earlier on in the film because i was thinking he was going to appear during that big universe colliding scene i thought he was that's obviously the place he would appear when we see the original uh well not the original but the 1980s 70s uh, superman christopher reeve and we're seeing the 1960s batman and we're seeing nicholas cage i'm expecting to see george clooney in this scene and a lot more. I feel, like I said, I think we should have got a lot more in that scene. Um, or even literally um, part of the story. It would be great to see some of the villains join with the Flash and Batman to fight Zod. Their, their planet is being destroyed also. Why can't we get Mr. Freeze or Catwoman or, you know, all of them? Why not? To help fight uh, Zod and the evil um, Kryptons. It, it's debatable how well they would do because they are human, but, you know, Batman did okay. Well, actually, he did terribly. He couldn't even fight one. But yes, that is kind of realistic that he would die by a Krypton. But I just, I feel like he should have got more, more time in the film, more fight sequences. He was very fast in this film. It definitely was not the same style of fighting as the original Keaton films because it, they clearly had a stuntman or some CGI fighting going on. It was super quick, but I would have liked to have seen more of Keaton. He felt underused at the end of the film. Uh, where was I? George Clooney. No Val Kilmer, sadly. I mean, he would have had to be very old. And uh, we saw how he was in Maverick. Unless they just bring a CGI Keaton or something, you know. That's also possible. But the weird thing is, the Keaton Batman is actually meant to be the same as the George Clooney Batman. 
who's actually meant to be the same as the Keaton Batman. They're all meant to be the same character, the same timeline. Even though the, the movies are completely sort of visually different, the Tim Burton and the uh, Schollmacher films. But that was a disappointment that they didn't go far. Oh yes, as I said, I was expecting George in that big universe clashing scene, but he wasn't, so I just, I thought I must have missed it somewhere. You know, like in Rise of Skywalker, all those voices are whispering to Rey, and, and all of these, oh, then you learn later on, Mace Windu. Oh, actually, I knew Mace Windu, but Ahsoka apparently said something, and Anakin apparently said something that I didn't even realise while watching, so I thought I just missed it. So by the time of the end of the film, I, I thought it was going to be Michael Keaton, and I was pleasantly surprised that it was George Clooney. I I think he should honestly make another Batman. I think he... People talk about Michael Keaton being like this old Batman Beyond Batman, because in Batman Beyond, that's an animated series, Batman Beyond, there's an older Bruce Wayne. It takes place in the future. Uh, futuristic Gotham and there's an old Bruce Wayne who now gives the mantle of Batman to a younger person I forgot what he was called but who's in college I think who's a student people say well they want Michael Keaton to be in that role but I, I actually think he looks a lot more like George Clooney if you watch the animated series uh, Batman Beyond. He looks more like George Clooney, so I wouldn't... I I would like that to see. Uh, I know that ba George has um, apologized or, for Batman, playing Batman, but I don't think he should... I think he should return and redeem himself. Same for Arnold as Mr. Freeze. It would be so cool! It would be so cool to see Mr. Freeze return as Arnold. This was the perfect time to do it. You're making a multiverse movie. It's kind of like the criticism towards um, Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness. There's not that much multiverse of madness going on. So likewise, I think they should have gone further. They should have gone crazier. I think um, Spider-Man No Way Home did it the best so far. They brought back the Green Goblin, the uh, Lightning Guy, whatever he was called. The Crocodile Guy, Lizard Thing, Doc Ock, and I feel... Oh, Sandman. Even though Sandman shouldn't have been in the film, I think it should have been maybe Harry or someone else. Maybe Venom. It didn't make sense for the Sandman to be there. Because the Sandman would actually want to go back to his own time to see his daughter. That's his entire motivation, his daughter. So that did not make any sense in that film. But still, they did it the best so far. Why aren't they doing a Batman version of that? Because they have all... They could go back to Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer. What are they doing? Or just have a mixture of random people. Have... Tom Hardy's Bane with Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman with, you know, Mr. Freeze. And, and then you can have Zod as well. <sighs> but yes, 